welcome to vlogmas day 14. I just feel extra crusty this morning, but we're here. Um, I'm prepped for work, so I have about an hour to myself, which feels really good. Um, it was really stressing me out the first track I trained on the show, that it was like every moment before leaving for work, I was thinking about the show and making sure my notes were ready and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really happy that I can just relax if I need to. <laughs> Especially on days like this where I only have a couple hours before the show, I find it very difficult to get things done like I would at a normal show day. So I think my plan is I'm going to get ready kind of quickly because I don't like wearing a ton of makeup to work, but I like to wear enough that I look like a person. And then I might try and do a little bit of kitchen cleaning because that's going to be... That's like the next round of sort of deep cleaning that needs to happen and uh, I'd rather do it in rounds than do it all in one go on Friday. Yeah. Uh, plan for today is I have work, I have a show, and then I would like to do some gift shopping because I found um, there's a specific product by a company that is apparently sold in this store in Midtown and I was looking it up but it's like a very like gift friendly store and there are a couple people that I'm like I'm not really sure what to get you um so we're gonna do some shopping and then come back and have dinner and then I'm gonna go out to an Irish music session which I'm very excited about this is something like a practice that I really want to keep in 2024 as difficult as it's going to be with a show schedule um should I choose to stay doing shows, which seems to be the thing because I can't uh, get interviews for any other jobs. <laughs> that, that is my reality and has been my reality since I started grad school. Like even for internships that weren't paying me, I was like, please, please hire me for this internship. And they're like, no, but I had so many people in theater being like, I really need you. And I was like, I really can't because I'm in grad school. Anyway, I found it very difficult to do a lot of things that were like personal life things last year. So I'd really like to figure out like how to maintain a balance or a semblance of a balance. Anyway, that's future stuff. Today, today is show and session, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, I will see you when I have my makeup on. It's weird. I definitely have always been a morning person over a night person. Like I just been an early riser. I feel really productive in the morning, but ever since um, really going into wardrobe at night full time, like this did not apply when I was with Cruise Line because we worked literally all day. I find mornings quite difficult. Um, and I would also be curious to know if that is an age thing, <laughs> who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm just, it's like I literally have to take everything day by day and I'm over it. So yesterday I said that I was going to talk about The Winter of the Witch and my thoughts on it. Let's talk about it now because why not? So the Winter of the Witch is the third book in the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. And uh, obviously I won't talk about the third book too much because of spoilers. The series follows... A girl who ends up in the middle of a war between two sort of godlike creatures, demons. Um, one is the Winter King and the other is the Bear, um, also known as the Summer King, I believe. I believe he's Summer. They're twins. They've been fighting for like eternity basically. <laughs> and in the first book, she meets the Winter King and is sort of really truly introduced to a lot of supernatural entities. She had kind of known about them but really stopped believing in them since uh, Catholicism had come to Russia and so a lot of the creatures that sort of existed and helped humans in their day-to-day -day had either died or were dying because they were no longer believed in and uh, were no longer also being cared for. It was like a very symbiotic relationship. Like the humans would 
care for the um, supernatural, and then in turn, they would take care of the humans. And the first book is very internal, like it, it takes place between the forest, so it's sort of a bridge to the Winter King, and uh, Vastia's house. Whereas the second and third books really open up the world to greater Russia and things that are happening between the Russian government, um, the church, which is heavily attached to the government, and um, a pagan group who are fighting them. And then, like, it's all sort of interconnected, like, uh, who the supernatural are kind of backing and trying to put in power and all that kind of stuff. And so Vasya is sort of in the middle of all of that. Her family is heavily involved. There's also a lot of like, she's obviously the third book is called The Winter of the Witch. She is the witch. She's the only one of her siblings who really sees what's out there. So there's a lot of strain on her personal relationships because her family is like heavily related to the government and royalty through marriages and all that kind of stuff. So, where is my so yeah, um, that's sort of like a very brief understanding. I loved the first book so much. I remember reading it so quickly. I was really invested in what was happening and I just thought it was very well executed. The second book, did I didn't love as much, and I think it's because the world was widened so much from the first book. And sometimes I don't enjoy that in a series. I sort of like a more gradual expansion, especially when a first book is so insular. However, I think the jump between the second and third book ends up making more sense, and thus I really enjoyed the third book. If I was like ranking the books, it would probably be one, three, two. I was very, very happy with how the series ended. It was one of those books where I wasn't really sure how the like, last couple pages would wrap up. I'm not totally sold on how that happened, but I'm also not mad about it because so much happened in that book. I was like, how, how is this just gonna like stop? Like, <laughs> and it's one of those stories where the way it ends, you can just kind of let your mind wander and explore all the possibilities for what is going to happen to these characters once you close the book, which I do kind of enjoy, especially in, kind of, I do enjoy that, especially in fantasy books and fantasy books that are heavily tied to fairy tale. It just makes a lot of sense to sort of end things in a where are they gonna go kind of way. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was nice to sort of break up the books that I haven't finished yet. I sort of understand where my um, reading mood is. And I think for one thing, it's with audiobooks. And for another thing, it is definitely in fantasy, which is exciting. Cause I find a lot of times when I'm feeling kind of slumpy, I'm not in the mood for fantasy, but that's not the case, which I'm very happy about. And then I also talked about yesterday I did not cover my mouth when I'm talking to you guys. So I talked about yesterday how I had started the audiobook for A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'm really enjoying it, actually. Uh, it's a lot emotionally, especially with the current state of the world, <laughs> between what Russia has been doing to Ukraine over the last year and now Israel's assault on Gaza. I feel like this book in particular in the like cycle of the Hunger Games ends up because it ends up posing questions like what is human life worth? What are children's lives worth? What is the cost of war? Does war ever end? Like those questions end up getting posed to the kids of the capital a lot. And so it lends itself to you also thinking about your own answers to those questions. So it's a very bizarre kind of read at the moment and I don't know that I necessarily timed it well, but I also, I'm not mad that I'm reading it right now and sort of duo thinking about these kinds of questions and where I stand politically. Am I running out of storage? <laughs> I don't even remember what I was talking about because I got a 
storage message because shocker i haven't cleared off my phone oops anyway yeah it's uh, the ballad of songbirds and snakes i'm enjoying it it's very it's making me think a lot which i'm really enjoying it's also very easy to listen to while i'm doing other things like it's great cleaning audiobook which is what i needed this week it's also it's making me remember how much i loved the hunger games like um i'm trying to remember which all-time hurricane it might have been irene um when i read hunger games one but i remember sitting in my house with a flashlight because we had no power and i read the book in like two days and then one of the places that had power was Barnes & Noble. So we'd been going there to like charge our phones. I asked my dad if I could get the second book. And I think within two or three weeks, I read um, the trilogy. And this, I, I haven't reread the book since the first time I read them. Uh, and this is reminding me um, what I enjoyed about Suzanne's writing style trying to finish up kind of quick so that I don't get sucked into taking along with this because it's, I'm gonna get sweaty anyway. That's really like a no makeup makeup look for me essentially. I'm just not putting on mascara because it's been irritating me at work so um, let's get this powder off. I don't know what my hair is gonna be doing today because I styled it yesterday and I'm not gonna restyle it before work. Live her life in a ponytail. It's gotten so long that at work my ponytail is annoying me and that's when I know my hair is too long. Um, I'm overdue for a hair appointment. My stylist is just she's a busy busy bee. Her client book books out very fast and I didn't anticipate far enough in advance making an appointment so I probably won't see her until the new year which is okay I can I will live I will live at least I've managed to keep the ends of my hair really healthy so I'm not I'm desperate for a cut because my hair is annoying me I'm not desperate for a cut because my hair is so dead I can't stand to look at it I'm not gonna take you with me to clean the kitchen because I need to focus so I'm gonna put on my audiobook clean a little and then we're gonna go to work I didn't even think to take my camera out until I left the store, but I found two. One thing I was really hoping was going to be there, and then um, another thing for somebody. And finding a gift that you just feel like is a good gift for someone, I love it. I love that feeling, which is why gifting is one of my love languages. Okay, show is over. I'm starving. The gifts from this shop have been acquired. I'm going home. <laughs> session and I don't have it in me to turn on more of a light than this because I'm tired. That's it. That's I'm gonna wrap the vlog here and we will see what tomorrow brings. I have a two show day so it's gonna be a shorty vlog but I'll try and put some stuff in the morning for you uh, but I also have a lot to do in the morning so we will see. We will see what happens tomorrow. Until then thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.